I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Hello and welcome to all of our listeners from around the world and across the United States. We're happy to have you back with us again. And if you are new to our show, welcome. We hope you enjoy everything that you're hearing. In fact, we hope you enjoy it so much that you'll uh, join us each and every Friday for new episodes. And all you have to do is very simple. Hit that like and subscribe button and uh, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode up. All right, so getting started with our show this evening... Last few, we've been talking about uh, some of our founding fathers and a few interesting, uh, incredible facts about them. And guess what? We have more. Yeah, I, I've liked this uh, theme for the uh, for this month in which we've done. It's uh, called Weird History, but uh, it's not really weird. It's unusual. It's different. It's unique. And it's, uh, I think, kind of entertaining. And yeah, quirky. For, <clears throat> for anybody who uh, likes trivia, playing trivia games, wow, this is, <clears throat> this is the mother load. Well, tonight, Gary, let's talk about uh, some of the 56 men who signed the Declaration of Independence. That document is dated July 4th, 1776. It's one of the most sacred documents in American history. And uh, 56 men actually signed it. And, you know, they had no guarantee that they would prevail and America would become a country separate from England. We, we were going up against the greatest power in the world mm-hmm. with the, a professional army against the provincials who were here in the colonies. So <clears throat> for these men to uh, you know, risk everything to sign this independence document is a pretty incredible thing when you think about oh, yes, it. Yes, we were going up against the British Empire. Yes, yes. Um, The average um, age of those 56 signers, by the way, was only 44 years old. The youngest one was Edward Rutledge. He was just 26. And who do you think the oldest signer of the Declaration of Independence was? Oh, I have no clue. Who was it? Benjamin. Oh, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. He was 70. 70 years old when he signed the Declaration of Independence. That's like the equivalent of being 100. Oh, back then, not many people made it to 70 years old. No. So, <clears throat> the uh, actually, the fact that the average age of the signers uh, was 44 is doubly amazing because back in those days, 200 years ago, a man in his 40s was considered old, Gary, and a man in his 50s, very old, yeah, elderly. People just didn't live that long two centuries ago. Another, uh, I guess we're three centuries now almost. Another fallacy that some people believe about the American Revolution is that it was started by the poor, and that just ain't so. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no. These 56 signers were highly successful citizens. They were the establishment. They were the ins in society, not the outs. Mm. Most of them had money. All of them had stature in the community. Uh, They didn't belong to any minority group as such. They... They didn't protest because of a lack of material things. None were hungry and none were jobless. But they joined this cause so publicly because they believed in the freedom of man and the dignity of the individual. Mm -hmm. They were willing to risk it all for that. They kind of remind me of some of the very brave folks during the uh, Holocaust in World War II who risked their lives and that of their families and their fortune by... Uh, going out and helping some of the Jewish folks who were at, at grave risk uh, in the Third Reich during the Holocaust. And so uh, the people who, you know, rose up to help those poor souls, these, were, these remind me of the bravery and courage of the folks that signed the Declaration yeah. of Independence. Well, I mean, if you think about it, the whole reason why the pilgrims came to the New World was to escape religious persecution. Right. Everybody started coming to the, uh, the United States because... They, they wanted their freedom of choice mm-hmm. and not to be bullied by um, a monarchy that was uh, saying you had to believe this way or you had to do it this way. 
And uh, so even though we were still under British rule up until a certain point, then it just got to be, well, it's too much. Yeah, for a number of complex reasons, which we won't get into uh, this evening. But right. Tonight, I thought what would uh, really make this uh, kind of an incredible uh, evening is if we check out to see how these folks did during and after the Revolutionary War. What happened to these people who signed the Declaration of Independence? Oh, I'm They're dying famous. to find out. They're famous because they signed it. <clears throat> right, but what happened to them? Yeah. It's uh, kind of like the, the uh, where are they now? Yeah, the history books really don't say. <clears throat> of the uh, 56 men who signed it, five of them were arrested by the British as traitors. So five of them, uh, you know, were caught during the war. Twelve of the signers had their homes looted and burned by the British. Uh, two of the signers lost their sons in the Continental Army, and 17 of them actually did lose their fortunes. And uh, nine of them fought and died during the Revolution. However, th that leaves quite a few more who pretty much got through unscathed. Many of the signers did live to uh, be a ripe old age. They enjoyed seeing their dream come true, uh, a fine, strong new nation develop. Three of them actually lived, Gary, to be over 90. Remember how incredible that was? Because you were considered old in your 40s. 90. Yeah. And, and, and uh, three lived over 90. Ten of them, ten, lived past 80. Holy cow. <laughs> And and eleven of them reached uh, past the seventy year old mark. Do you know? Do you know who the uh, oldest signer was? I, I have no clue. That was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, good old Benjamin Franklin, yeah, the man yeah. who wanted the turkey to be our uh, yeah. our bird that represented <clears throat> the, the national seal. Yeah, the national seal. Yeah, and so he was seventy years old at the time. And then, so if he was the oldest, we have to go ahead and tell everybody who the youngest would be. Somebody you probably had never heard of. His name was Edward Rutledge, and he was only 26 years old at the time. Oh, wow. That he walked into history for all time. At 26. 26, yeah. Um, the signers, uh, Gary, they, they came from all walks of life, all occupations. 24 of them were lawyers. 14 of them were farmers. Yeah, 14 farmers signed the Declaration oh, of Independence. get out of town. Yeah, we don't usually think about things like that. Farmers signing the Declaration of Independence, but there were 14 of them. There were four doctors, there were nine merchants, and there was even a minister. Three of them were born in Ireland, uh, two each in England and Scotland, and, and one in Wales. Uh, during the uh, re uh, revolution, each of the 56 were offered immunity by England. Can you believe this? If they would return to the fold. Wow. Yeah. So they were all given a chance to mend their ways. <clears throat> How many of them you think accepted that offer? None. None. No signer defected or changed his stance on uh, freedom. So what happened to some of them? Well, <clears throat> some died before their time and others lived well past the turn of the 19th century. One signer, George Wythe, we've talked about him before. We've uh, talked about his home in Williamsburg. Yes, and how he was poisoned by his yes. grandnephew. <clears throat> At the age of 80, he was poisoned by his grandnephew. And um, one of the signers, Samuel Chase, he was appointed to the United States Supreme Court by President George Washington. Oh, wow. Uh, Caesar Rodney died before his time of cancer, of all things. And uh, Button Gwinnett, he became governor of Georgia, and he was killed in a duel. Oh. 42 years old, Button Gwinnett uh, died in a duel, and that's how one of our founding fathers who signed the Declaration ended his life. Isn't it amazing that they, that's how a lot of people back then thought, that's the most um, rational yeah, way yeah. to solve a, a conflict. Yeah. I don't agree with you. Let's go out and try and shoot each other. A gentlemanly duel, uh, you know, with all the rules and procedures involved. Mm -mm -mm. Oliver Walcott, he became the governor of Connecticut. Uh, and then uh, Tom, Thomas Lynch Jr., he was, uh, he was 27, so he was one of the younger ones there. He disappeared three years later with his wife, when they were on a voyage to the West Indies. So I have a feeling that their ship might have gone down in a storm or something. So um, Thomas Lynch Jr. just disappeared. Oh, wow. For all time. Charles Carroll, he lived to the uh, ripe old age of 90. He died in 1832. 
And he actually spanned the gap between the colonial days and the age of engines, and he actually helped lay the cornerstone of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Wow. Mm -hmm. So such were the men, the 56, Gary, who signed to that important document and made the dream of the United States of America come true. And uh, even though this is a, a very brief episode this evening, I thought it might be important to uh, just look into some of the very unusual fates of some of these very important people. Oh, yes. Quite unusual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up this episode. And as always, I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these were some incredible and unusual facts. 